So a few weeks ago, I was involved in running my first hackathon for my company in Hamburg. And if you look here, these are some uh, examples of people meeting and getting together, because the hackathon is an event where people come together for a short time uh, to explore new ideas, uh, to uh, design new ideas, and then to bring them into computing realities. So this is what we de did, and we decided that we want to put this hackathon under the title of healthcare. So we were exploring ideas around healthcare, and we had numerous teams from basically all over Europe coming down to the port of Hamburg, where we ran it. And um, we not only had uh, our teams, we also had a squadron of little robots, NAOs, to help us explore new ideas. And um, as we are not all experts in, in the field of healthcare, we also invited down a lot of specialists uh, in the medical area. So, for example, we also invited people from the Northern German Alzheimer Foundation to guide us and to give us a little bit more insight into uh, the background of a life with Alzheimer and to also explore and help with the scenarios and challenges set for Alzheimer's patients. So, uh, it all started and um, it was a really special moment for me to see that um, just after a time, the experts from the Alzheimer Foundation was really wowed by having a now robot talking to a patient, interacting with a patient, and, and helping this pretended patient uh, in the day-to-day -day life. And um, this is particularly uh, interesting uh, because at the beginning, uh, they said uh, they would have never assumed and imagined that a robot could really help one of their patients. They would have been very concerned, and, and they I wouldn't have considered this at all. So, however, just seeing things, exploring things, understanding something about cognitive computing and robots really changed their minds, and particularly uh, touching the sweet little now robot, they all fell in love, of course. <laughs> so, this is a great example, I feel, that um, uh, we all need to open ourselves up to the new things, to the new technology, and to learn about it and touch it and, and together explore and set new frontiers for us. So, another example, and, and you heard the song a little bit, and I don't know if I was talking and if you could uh, understand the line. So, the line was, it's not easy. And I didn't pick this song because I want to say it's not easy leading into this cognitive era. I picked this because it's, uh, it's a special song. Uh, so some of you might know the Grammy Award-winning producer Alex Kidd. He's working with artists like Rihanna or Eminem. And he has composed um, a cognitive song. And um, he was doing it interacting with a cognitive computer. And actually what the cognitive system did is it read and understood five years of cultural data. Actually, the top 100 billboard charts that are coming out every week, he was reading the text, understanding patterns in the music, and then trying to make sense of it and also providing this to the artist. So uh, in a process, they were jointly then co-creating uh, a new song. And this is particularly interesting, I, I feel, um, because it is uh, also nicely explaining why I don't like the term artificial intelligence so much. For me, for me it is augmented intelligence, and uh, it is, uh, so the goal is different. So it is not man versus machine, but it's uh, a process of co-creation and of really trying to um, work together, help to make better decisions, create new mu music, create other things, and it's a joint process. So for me, augmented intelligence is much better describing it. So this was the second example. And then now back to my realities, as I'm a consulting, working with a lot of clients right now in, the, in this space. And so what is life uh, 
in a company, in the corporate world. So because we had an artist leading, taking leadership into the cognitive era, what are companies doing? And I actually think uh, a lot of leaders have actually understood that um, the time is changing, technology is opening up, and a lot of new uh, opportunities are out there. So they start really uh, to explore their journey. And I'm very proud to introduce to you our German Doctor House. So some of you might know the television series <laughs> so of the doctor that is trying to diagnose rare diseases. And our Doctor House is that over there. This is Professor Schäfer uh, and his great team. And uh, actually, they are working also uh, with, with the whole management team of uh, the Rhön Kliniken Group to explore what cognitive system uh, and how they can help them. And in this particular case, um, they are trying to work with the cognitive system to help diagnose more precisely and much quicker rare diseases. So uh, I think this is a great example of, of uh, doctors, um, maybe also not familiar with technology so much, but openly, openly exploring things. The second example that I want to give um, is something that you might not consider as a typical industry to start a cognitive journey. Uh, it's an insurance. It's the uh, VKB, Versicherungskammer Bayern. And actually, they started already in 2015 with their cognitive journey, uh, and they were thinking and exploring the idea how a cognitive system could support them in making their customers more happy and more satisfied with their service. So what that cognitive system is actually doing is that it is reading all incoming text documents that uh, is now um, reaching this insurance, be it emails, be it letters, and the cognitive system is understanding the sentiment the things, the level of frustration, and, and now they are really working and implementing this uh, to better serve their clients, to better reach out immediately if something is wrong and hidden in the pile of letters that they receive every day. So just one example, and from a leadership perspective, I would like to summarize a little bit what they all have in common. So they have been uh, so all the leaders have been truly um, taking responsibility to explore the new world and new technologies. Um, they have been uh, um, openly, um, as a team, uh, trying to understand today's challenges and important for the first use cases, also put everything aside that they knew already. So discard everything that you assume because a lot of board members usually assume they know their business, but it is really worthwhile looking into the details and really look uh, what could be improved and where you want to bring innovation and bring in maybe also uh, new, um, uh, tech, um, methodologies like design thinking and uh, developing in an agile way. So then, very important, so we got support of the whole leadership team. So it's a joint effort. It's not just the IT department. It is not just maybe just one other business department. So they all were trying to, uh, to explore the world uh, together. And uh, very important for me is really as a leader also enabling ambidexterity in their company, allowing part of the uh, organization to explore new ideas while the rest is still earning money and running the operations as usual. So, and, and really trying a way to, to do both at the same time is sometimes a challenge for companies. And finally, leading in a cognitive era involves staying involved all the time. So they are there from the first idea through the project and uh, until the first things are really live and active. So, very cool examples, I think, uh, what we are doing here right now. But I don't know about you, but now that I touch so much technology and see so much changing around me, I sometimes also feel overwhelmed, even though I'm exploring it every day. And I think so, as leaders, we also need to recognize uh, that we need to invest in, in all the things that also create stability for us and also for everybody around us. So, and what is creating stability very often, of course, is investing into the things like friendships, family, 
and also creating values and leading uh, as a role model in this new era. So, and I think with that, uh, we are really, I think, on the right track to really leverage those new technologies and to, to um, explore uh, new, really, benefits for us in society. But coming back to what I start, uh, where, where I started, to, to the little hackathon, I think it is a great thing to just jointly explore some of the new technologies. And today, to do it, I brought a little friend with me. And uh, just to say that this little friend uh, uh, sort of was developed at the hackathon, and you just see it there, so he's already there. Um, and the great thing about my little friend, hello, <laughs> is that it is really uh, was done, just think about, just in one weekend, just with people who have not touched this technology before, not being medical experts, and, and we brought together robotics, cognitive technologies, and the insight from the medical background of Alzheimer's. So, and now, this time, the NOW robot is called Wallace, the Watson Alzheimer support. <laughs> and, and we just need to see if, if he is alive and wants to talk to me. And just, uh, they, they said to me yesterday in the rehearsal, so you are the best one to talk to him because you are the oldest in the team, so it's maybe, uh, so it's uh, the best way. <laughs> so, so they will buy it from you. So, so I'm now uh, starting a little bit. Uh, so and if anything goes wrong, it's because I'm now the patient interacting. So. Hello, now. Sorry, Anuka. I couldn't understand you. <laughs> Sorry, Anuka. I couldn't understand you. Sorry, Anuka. I couldn't <laughs> understand you. Oh, I can't understand you as well. So, good morning. Sorry, Anuka. I couldn't <laughs> So, we try good again. Good morning, Anuka. It's 8 a.m. in the morning. How are you? I'm good. I'm good? Great. <laughs> Please wait. I have the following news for you. Anna will visit you later today. Okay. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Darling. Hello. Hey, Anika. It's 11 a.m. It's time to take your medicine. Okay. <laughs> okay. I. <laughs> Now, here I am. I took my medicine. I took my medicine. No, you did not. Please look into your medicine box. Okay. Okay. Please take the red pill and show me your mouth. <laughs> Thank you for taking the right pill, Annika. Have some water, please. <laughs> it's pickles. <laughs> okay. Hi, Annika. It is noon. Time for lunch. What are you going to eat? Milk rice, darling. So here is, here is Annika. You should better eat something else as your choice contains milk and is not compatible with the antibiotic medicine you take. Do you have any other idea? <laughs> Maybe potato? Potato? Good idea. Enjoy mm -hmm. it. Okay. <laughs> Good. Mm, I feel like a cat. Annika. 
Okay. Annika, it is 1 p.m. Have you finished eating so you can take your medicine? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Please take the yellow pill and show me your mouth. Thank you for taking the right pill, Annika. Have some water, please. Okay. There is a message from Anna. She will be 15 minutes late. Let's have some fun in the meantime. Are you okay with some dancing? It tickles. Okay. I hope that even though uh, maybe technology was not running that smoothly, it is quite impressive to see what can be done and how technology can work. And I, yes, <laughs> so he is tired. Um, but still, even though he is getting to sleep and, and maybe he's not yet the best coach in the world, I hope that I have inspired you a little bit to explore these new things, to touch it, and to also fearlessly lead into the cognitive era and he will be available for some uh, selfies in the break. So thank you very much. <laughs>